What is up guys, Cajun here, and today we're back with a water bottle. That's 25 shield right there. We're back with another community live stream recap, Critical Ops community live stream recap for February 19th, 2019. I don't know if this is going to go out Tuesday night or Wednesday, whenever it's going to go out. Y'all are going to see it before we start. If you're new here, which you probably are, you're probably from the, the, the subreddit, subscribe, please. I do these every single community live stream for you guys so that you guys don't have to watch through the whole VOD uh, if you don't feel like it. And I also do update videos and uh, Critical Ops news videos, stuff like that. So, uh, like commentary type videos. So, if you're interested in that, click that sub button and... Uh, let uh, follow my Twitch stream in the description below and go join my Discord and you'll get notified when I go live on Twitch and when I upload. And without further ado, let's get into it. So this week we had Nigel on the stream. Uh, if you don't know who Nigel is, he is the level designer uh, or the map designer uh, for Critical Ops. Uh, he joined the company about two years ago, uh, so he he said he's still newish, but he he he's he he's he, he know he knows what he's doing, boys, uh, and and he's in, he's enjoyed his time with the company. Now, um, some news stuff. One point three beta. They went over that, or they went uh, they reiterated. All the stuff that's new in the uh, upcoming update. Um, there's still no release date. It'll be released soon. Trademark. Um, uh, but anyway, all the features, new lobby, which has a uh, new lobby UI, which has new tabs at the bottom, uh, a new invite tab. Your rank shows right under your name. Um, uh, and on screen rather than having to go into the profile and see what rank you are uh, it says it and and all um, and you can also see your yellow credits and your blue credits can't remember if you did that if if it was like that in the old UI but who knows um, new loadout menu um, with your equip skin preview and an equip skin progress bar um, to show you how many skins you have and how good you are. That is so much better. Um, sorry about the glare, guys. Um, anyway, new loadout tab with the equip skins. Um, loadout tab also has a better emblem section and there's a coming soon section, so we'll see what that's all about. Uh, new social tab, uh, friends, clan, and news, party chat. There is going to be a fix for that. Um, uh, Wadi did say that the other day, uh, when we talked in the influencer chat, he, he had asked about that and we said, yeah, it's kind of, it kind of disappeared in the update. Um, so, um, also there's new browse tabs, uh, for the browse filter and host section, um, right under the quick game tabs. Uh, it, it's cleaner and more compact and, and easier to see. I guess. Um, also, new buy menu UI with, uh, an, again, equipped skin preview uh, so that you know what you're getting. Um, practice mode uh, came in this update as well. Uh, you can have one to eight enemy bots, zero to seven friendly bots, and just so you guys know, this is only in practice mode that these bots are going to be here. It's not going to be in matchmaking. They're only in practice mode. Um, there's four modes. Easy, medium, hard, and extreme. Uh, time limit can go from one minute to infinity, which is 999 minutes and 99 seconds, which equivalizes to about 16 and a half hours, give or take. Um, so I might do a 16 hour stream if I can do it. Um, uh, new weapon, the Vector, came in this update. Uh, it's, there are tier 1 through 3 skins. Uh, there's going to be more, I think, on release. I'm not sure. Uh, I think the Tentacle skin, which is going to be in the Critical Pass, which we're going to go over in a minute, uh, is going to be 
in there. Um, I think that's a tier three. I can't remember. Um, and it is seventeen hundred dollars in diffuse. So a pretty cheap SMG. Um, I've been using it a lot rather than the MP7, especially on second rounds rather than buying an AK. It's definitely a good weapon to buy. Um, it, it's a good middle ground between the AK and the MP7, especially in a second round scenario. Uh, you know, that that's how I enjoy using it and, and definitely for, for eco rounds too. Uh, and we also had the new knife, the Tactical Axe. Um, 10 out of 10, Wadi recommends because it looks funny when you're stabbing people and hacking people. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, Nigel, this was his area of expertise, the new TDM map, Heat. Um, not only did we, you know, get, hey, you know, we got a new map, but we also got an expl uh, explanation. Yes, Cajun. An explanation on kind of how he works with maps and stuff. Um, it's obviously based on the Plaza visual style, and it's available in TDM, gun game, and practice mode. So um, here are some questions that uh, Wadi asked Nigel. Uh, his first one was, what inspired the layout of the map? And Nigel said, we already have uh, TDM's maps for Bureau and Raid, which are Division and Brewery. Uh, so Plaza seemed like a good thing for this TDM map. And I'm par paraphrasing these. I was typing as he was talking. So... If I if I mess these up, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, Nigel. Um, so Plaza theme seemed like a good theme for this TDM map. It needed a simple layout, and uh, Nigel spent a lot of time figuring out uh, what was good, um, and how it was good for the modes it's meant for. Um, second question: Do most of these TDM maps take in the use of all weapons in the game? Uh, so. Uh, for instance, does can you use all the weapons in a TDM map? And Nigel said, uh, yes, these TDM maps are made with the intentions for close range, mid range, and long range to be able to do anything with any weapon type. Also, these kinds of maps help test out new weapons. Um, they, he said that they used it to uh, test out the vector a lot, uh, as well as the map itself, looking for exploits, looking for weird jump places, um, and stuff like that. Um, it's useful to have closer and more action-packed maps to tell us more about range and how it works. Um, and then there were a lot of people asking... Are you planning a diffuse map? I know a lot of people have been talking about that through the community in the past week and, and like a really long time they've been asking about that. And uh, Nigel said, yes, of course. People get the idea that just because I released one map that I'm done with maps, not making any more. Um, but he's he's always making maps and working on ideas for different maps. If I could project, uh, and he projected a goal or not a goal, really, but he, he, he said, like, if I can envision 2019, there's going to be quite a bit of maps uh, this year. I, I already know he was working on Heat. He's working on Plaza, or he's reworking Plaza. He's making a new TDM, or a new Diffuse map, and maybe another TDM map. I don't know. Not sure. Don't quote me on that. But he, he was definitely working on three uh, a TDM map, a rework for Plaza, and uh, a new Diffuse map. So he, he's working really hard, and we're going to get into why this takes so long in a minute. Um, and actually, right now we're going to get into it. So Wadi asked, um, a lot of people are like, hey, why don't you just make a Diffuse map? People probably don't under, or wait, uh, people probably don't understand all the factors in the making map. What's the process of making a Diffuse map? This is a long answer. Buckle in, boys. So Nigel said many people think that the map process is quite easy. However, it's not. That's why it takes a long time to even make these small TDM maps. There's a lot of effort that goes into it, but doesn't show on the surface. The most important and tough part is the layout of the diffuse map. Uh, Nigel's title is level designer, and the uh, layout is the design part of the map. So to create a new diffuse map, there needs to be pre-planning, like what kind of map do we want? What are the current maps like? What's their quirks? What's their traits that they have? And then they invest, they investigate those maps, see what's what works for those maps, and then try to make something unique from the rest of the other maps. So, uh, try, they try to make something different, something that's not in, say, a plaza, not in a bureau, or uh, a, a, ra uh, 
yeah, a raid, uh, a grounded, stuff like that. Um, and then once he figures that out, he makes a great layout with no assets, which looks really ugly, he said. Um, and then also a lot of other factors go in. Time to site from spawn. So how, how long it takes for you to get to spawn to site. If you're CT, if you're T, um, the sidelines of the map uh, where you can go and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, skyboxes, etc. He didn't really add skyboxes, but I did because th that's also something you have to worry about because nades and shit um some uh he said sometimes we do testing with other people which also helps with current maps um as well as later maps to help me create better maps so finding these exploits say in in um what's it called heat uh for example it, it's gonna help him create these later maps and hopefully there won't be as many exploits uh, in later maps um, and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and then he said once the layout works well, map de decoration comes in. Uh, and he said this is really hard because uh, they need more art assets that not only looks good but runs well enough for, uh, for, for mobile people. Um, he says then he collaborates with other artists and they look to create assets that run well on mobile devices and what boundaries we can push with uh, the mobile graphics systems and stuff like that. Um, he said after this it's continuous testing, exploit testing, etc. Um, there are reasons for cars placed, statues placed, market stalls placed. There's reasons for everything he places down. Um, it, it, there's always a reason for it to be there. Um, TLDR, it's not easy. It's a lot of effort and a lot of time. Um, the next question was, why are there no doors or things to break? Um, and I'm guessing this is mostly kind of like in reference to CSGO. Uh, for example, Squeaky and Cash or the door on the... Uh, on, um, I, don't, I don't really know where it's called. I think it's T-Long. Don't quote me on it. Um, but the door where you, you go to the right side of the spawn and then you go up and then it's this hallway and you have window all the way over here and like window and balcony and stuff and you have this hallway and you could go into a door right there yeah i'm i'm great i'll probably put a picture up of it um but but doors like that in cs why don't we have that in critical ops um so he said the things the maps uh the, the thing is the maps that critical ops has is uh, static maps. They're static maps. Dynamic objects are players, nades, weapons, etc. at the moment. Uh, and he said right now with the engine CFE is using and the technology they're using, there's really no way to put dynamic items into the game. Uh, they just don't have the technology for it at the moment. Uh, with doors, you know, you also have to think of how do you, how are you going to open it? That would mean that would mean more code, more UI to, to, to put into the game, new technology, uh, and, and just everything changed just for that door to open. Um, and long story short, it's just Im impossible to add something like that in the game with the engine technology they have right now. Uh, however, maybe in the future, who knows? Uh, he said it's also uh, the same for environmental stuff. I've had suggestions for like a moon map um, and like changing gravity, which <laughs> that'd be sick by the way. Um, <laughs> But it, it's just impossible to change those types of things. Um, but maybe, Nigel, a moon base map? Nigel, if you're watching this, come on. Moon base? Terrorists trying to blow up the moon? Come on. That that would be great for the story. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then, really, the last question was, what kind of other maps can we expect in the future? And I just said that people have been asking him about training maps, and that's something he definitely wants to get added in the future. Uh, small maps, not so serious maps, more of fun maps, 1v1 maps, 8v8 maps, etc. like that. More like a playground rather than a serious map, uh, like a bomb site map uh, and stuff like that. He said he's made some prototypes of these types of things, uh, of these, you know source of maps uh and and they've tested them he said they've worked pretty well and so it's possible that maybe they come in the future but it, of course it's not a priority they want to get more diffuse maps out uh of course more tdm maps for the casual players and uh and stuff like that 
And so then they showed a video about linking accounts. I'm going to put it in uh, after this clip. And basically, it just talks about um, linking your account to Facebook, Google Play, and Game Center and stuff like that. So you don't lose your account or accidentally delete your account like a lot of people have been doing. And that's why they made this video. So here, take a watch. Hey guys, welcome to our first tutorial video. Today you will learn how to link your account and keep it safe. To link your account, you need to first complete the tutorial and the practice match and be in the main hub of the game. Alright, let's get started with linking your account. Linking is simple. Tap on your username from the main hub and you will be able to see which social media accounts you can link to. To link your account, select the social media account type you want to link to. Tapping on the account type will start the linking process. Once you are linked to your account, you can choose the cloud saved account or you can link your current account to the social media account you chose. This will discard the previous account link. Be extremely careful when doing this. As you can see, here we are choosing to load the cloud save. Now let's move to using the same account on multiple devices. In the first example, we were using the account on iOS. Now we want to use the same account on Android. If you remember, we linked the account to Game Center. We now need to link the account to Facebook to have it accessible on Android. We are now on Android and we need to link to Facebook to get access to the account we were using before. Again, we need to choose Load Online Account. Now that we are on the account, you can link the account to Google if you wish. Choosing the other option, Replace with New Account, will discard the previous account link. A lot of players lose access to their Critical Ops account this way. We urge you to be very careful when doing this. If you discard your account, this means losing access to your Critical Ops account permanently. We are unfortunately not able to assist in these cases. Hopefully you now understand how to link your account and how to keep your account safe. This is the end of the tutorial. Rothmund signing out. Alrighty, and then they got into the news of the Season 3 Critical Pass, and holy shit. Boys, we have a number on how many tiers there are. The big 6-0 Elite Pass has 60 tiers. Sixty. Six. Zero. Sixty. Uh, the free pass is going to have 13 tiers, I believe he said. Uh, and then they teased some of this, uh, some of these uh, tiers. Um, the Ace Emblem and Tentacles Vector was shown. It said Tier 1. I don't know if these are actual tier order. And then Tier 2 said the HK417 Honey. Um uh, tier 3, Uprising Emblem, Tier 4, Rose MP7, and Tier 5, 50 Credits, and Stinger P250. Uh, I've read those kind of fast. Um, I'm going to leave them up on the screen for a, a bit longer than normal. All right, and so then comes the actual uh, community Q&A session, which, um, again, I left out questions that I heard that, you know, we've heard repeated over and over again um except for maybe this clan wars question and bots for diffuse bots and matchmaking because there were some different answers there um so yeah let's get into it Alrighty. so the first question was about clan wars a lot of people were asking about clan wars because obviously it's not in the ui yet so where is it we saw it in that screenshot that the alliance posted where's it at uh, and they said it's something CFE has talked about. However, there's no concrete information or confirmation that it will definitely happen. They're still trying to figure out, you know, what to do. What should it be like? And why he said he might make a, a thread later in the week on the subreddit to see kind of what the community wants and maybe how it works and stuff like that. So we'll we'll, we'll see and maybe in a couple community live streams you know down the road we'll get some more information on it 
Someone asked if Nigel was the only map creator. He said yes, I, uh, that he is the only level designer. However, uh, designing a level is a team effort. Uh, Nigel is the one responsible for designing, but he's also assisted by other fellow devs to uh, test the map and and make sure it, it's it's working and stuff. Question number three, since the nades show in the loadout screen, are we getting nade skins? Um, and this was a very plausible question, at least this time. We've we've seen people ask, oh, can we get nade skins? People, you know what? He was like, yeah, it's, it's kind of a good idea, but at the same time, is it? Um, and he said, uh, no, uh, it isn't planned at the moment. Uh, that they're just in the loadout for now, but I guess we'll see maybe in a couple live streams if they announce something on that. Who knows? Someone asked about bots for Diffuse, and uh, no, not yet, boys. Uh, the, the practice mode is kind of like version one of bots and, and how they work. Uh, if they wanted to put everything uh, they wanted, if, wait. If they put everything that they wanted, it wouldn't have been released right now. It probably would have released been released months, maybe a year down the line. Uh, so basically, long, you know, not right now, but probably in the future. And, you know, it takes time to teach the bots how to play the game. You know, Nigel said they're just like dogs. You got to bribe them with treats and, you know, tell them, you know, here's where you plant the bomb and, you know, good boy, here here you go, have a treat, stuff like that, um, and I just had the best fucking idea, um, ha, hopefully I can do that, um, it, it, if you saw the terrorist jumping around with my hand, then I did it, boys, um, people were asking about a, uh, about bots in matchmaking, uh, Basically kind of the same question, but um, I think the question before was more of a practice uh, diffuse mode. Um, but this question was bots for AFK players and like hackers that get kicked or banned or whatever. Uh, and they said no, uh, the bots are not online in that sense. Uh, it's just not possible right now. Maybe in the future it'll be uh, possible. Someone asked about vote kicking, and uh, they said they've talked about this at the office several times, and it would be a nice feature. Nigel said that. Uh, and then he quickly apparently saw some question about an Easter egg duck, and he said, definitely not going to elaborate on a specific duck situation. <laughs> I, I love Nigel and his ducks in his maps. I don't know where this one is, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start looking. Maybe there's a duck in heat that I don't know about. And then the last question was uh, someone asked about more options for room hosts, like kicking people and stuff like that. I personally I think it's a great idea, especially for streamers that you know someone comes in, maybe someone's hacking, easy kick, boys. Um, and so it's a good idea. It's been it's been discussed. It hasn't really been you know, moved on too much, uh, but it, it's not that bad of an idea, uh, Wadi and, and, and Nigel agreed, so who knows, maybe, maybe we get that in the future. And that's basically it, guys, um, if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, um, also, if you want to see more news videos, update videos, and community live stream recaps, th this is really the place to be. I look like I'm dead um because i am um but anyway guys hope you enjoyed um and yeah i'll see you in the next one Bye -bye.